Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, where we're going to be looking at Vertigis Studio Inline. I'm Aled Nicholas. I'm a consultant in the Vertigis Studio team here at One Spatial, and Vertigis Studio Inline is one of the products we work with. If you've got any questions during the webinar, either, either use uh, your, your question button or put, put them in the chat. If you put them in the chat, we'll get to them towards the end of the presentation as we're going along. So, with that, let's get going. So, what we're going to look at today is we're going, to, we're going to take a look at linear reference systems. So, I'm hoping that a lot of you on this webinar will have a good idea of what linear reference systems or linear reference data, hope, hopefully you'll have a good idea of what they are if you're interested in Vertigis Studio Inline. But if you're not entirely sure, we'll, we'll have a look through linear reference systems just to make sure we're all we all know what we're talking about when we when we reference that. We'll then take a look at Vertigi Studio Inline and we'll have a look at a technical demo of that software as well. And from there I'll let you know what you can do to find out more about Vertigi Studio Inline. So linear reference systems or linear reference data or LRS you might you might hear me refer to them as any of those three, and essentially they're all the same thing. So what is it? Put simply, it's it's just a different way of storing geographic locations. So normally we would use a geographic coordinate system, and with that we have our x and y coords that we all know, and in that instance we're using the Earth as the reference system. So everything starts from zero zero x and y. Where, where the equator meets prime meridian. And then every location on Earth after that has two values, your X being your horizontal location from origin and your Y being your vertical location from origin. But if everything we're interested in only falls along a line, one single line, then we can use that as a reference. So we don't need two different values. And that's where our linear reference data comes in. It's stored with one value, the M value, and that M is the measured distance from the start of a line. So if you've had a look at data and you've seen your attribute tables and you've seen a column or a field with M values in there, you've probably already got linear reference data. And some of the benefits of using linear reference data over your traditional geographic coordinate systems is that it's very accurate. If you picture a pipeline that we, we need to dig to get to, if your X, Y is off just a little bit, you won't find your asset. And here with linear reference systems, we're saying what you're looking for is so many meters from the start of the line. And the second benefit is it's, it's a lot simpler. It's easier to collect, it's easier to store. I mean, how many times have, I guess everyone listening in the webinar has a background in GIS, how many times have you seen people get their X and Y coordinates mixed up? You've got your X and your Y column and your Y and your X column, and that will take you to completely the wrong location. In this scenario, it's far easier, far simpler to collect and store your, data, uh, your information. So if we look at this little diagram on the screen, we've got our green line, which is a pipe, and we've got a set of, set of units along the bottom. Let's just say that, that's meters. So we're going to 120 meters in intervals of 20. So that's our linear reference system. That's our linear asset. We can see that 14 meters along, We've got, uh, we've got a point that might be a valve. So we can see that from the start of that pipe, 14 meters along, we have a valve. We don't need to store an X and Y for that point. We can also see that 20 to 80 meters along the pipe, we've got some other variation. This might be the pipe diameter changes. So we're seeing a difference in pipe properties. And then finally, we've got 20 to 29 meters. This might be another, another classification. So there might be asset protection added in that area. We might have 
some vulnerable ground between 20 and 29 meters so we put some additional asset protection in place and very simply that that's what a linear reference system is we're using a linear reference and all the associated information from that is added to the linear reference system so now we've got a bit of an idea about what a linear reference system is let's have a look at some examples of where we might want to use a linear reference system so first off roads and highways they're what you could i guess what you could call a typical linear asset you've got a road which is a line and you've got a whole host of associated information with that line and that could be your bridges you might be managing safety and maintenance on the roads you might be looking at culverts you might be trying to store street signage locations you might have data which is looking at traffic trends and you're trying to ascertain some information from that all this kind of information can be captured and managed within a linear reference system for roads and highways we look at utilities pipes and cables they're a great example of a linear asset they are literally a straight line and then you've got associated features with that as we talked about in the previous slide for a pipe you might be looking at something like asset protection you might be looking at, at valves for cables you might be looking at repeaters along the cable you might be looking at um, maintenance visits or site inspections all that kind of information we can use as part of our linear reference system rivers and streams you might be looking at flow direction or bank and condition bed materials whole host of information now that we could possibly get from rivers and streams railways you might be looking at stations you might be looking at signals and hopefully you're starting to see where we can use examples for linear reference systems let's say that we have our linear reference data and let's have a look at a typical example where having that data we're not really making the most of it so this is a typical road network segment we've got two polylines we've got an x and a y for the start and the end of each polyline and we've also got an m value so we know it's a linear reference data set we can't really see other than the location of these segments we can't really see much else other than that but if you've used road data in the past you'll know there's a whole host of associated information that can go along with it in this instance we've added our speed limit data so we can see the red is 45 green goes on to 50 speed and then blue goes on to 60. and one of the really good things about linear reference systems is these these additional layers of information don't need to match the segments as such so you know you're not going to have one segment that's 30 miles an hour and then the other segment is exactly where it changes to 50. Road data sets don't really tend to work that way. And we can see that in the diagram, it's called a linear event. So we can add these additional bits of information as linear events or point events. So we can see now where our road changes speed limit. Is there anything in that speed limit and anything in the additional data we have that might indicate that speed limits are causing accidents well we can see a point events for a point events layer for accidents and yeah we can see there's a correlation between the higher speed limit equaling more accidents we've got one outlier in the lower speed limit rather than that the majority of them are in the 60 miles an hour zone that might be something we want to take a look at we might want to put a speed camera there uh, we might want to reduce the speed limit something to think about but now we've got more information associated to this road segment as well we got our bus lane that's great we can see that purple line is where our bus lane is taking place starting to see a bit of an issue here though is where did our speed limit change um, did it match up with our bus lane so does our bus lane straddle the middle speed limit or does it cut across both can't quite tell from that image 
but there we go. And we've also got some more data that we need to put on there as well. So we're managing the maintenance teams of the roads and we've got maintenance schedules based on the road surface type. So we can see here how gray is concrete and then we move into asphalt and then we move back into concrete again. We've got different schedules based on the surface types and they need to go out at different times to, to carry out maintenance on the roads. That's great, we can see that, brilliant. But I can't see where the bus lanes are and I can't see where the speed limit is. So we've got a bit of an issue there where everything's overlapping. And that is the problem we have with a lot of map views where we're looking at multiple sources of data. Maps are top down and we're only seeing the topmost layer. Yeah, yeah we can look at putting a bit of transparency on the layers, we can look at increasing the width of the lines, but in reality, that's only gonna get us so far. So what we could really use for this example, we could use a cross-sectional view of this data. So we've got our accidents layer, we've got our speed limits, we've got our bus lanes, and we've got our road types. And we can see exactly along the, the cross-section where they fall and how they align with each other. And this is what we call our straight line diagram. And this is a really useful bit of information to have. It gives far, far more value than that view we've just seen on the previous slide with all the layers overlapped on top of each other. But what if the data we were looking at was live and up to date? That'd be even better, yeah? So using the accidents, for example, you know, if, if every time we had a report of an accident that was added to the straight line diagram, that would be great. What would be even more useful then though, is if we added a map to the straight line diagram so we can get some contextual information for, for all the other features surrounding this segment of road. That'd be, that'd be really useful too. So what if we then took that map and this straight line diagram and we had them in an interactive map, so in our web mapping application. So we can click on other features, get attribute information. Um, we can take measurements. We can edit data. We can add data. That would really start to become something pretty useful then. And then finally, what if we had some, some way of linking this web mapping application to other applications like uh, asset management systems, something along them lines, or maintenance record systems. So if we could, if we could see, based on some of this information we're seeing in a straight line diagram, we need to create another record, such as additional maintenance or a site visit. We could potentially link to that system and create a new record. And that's the type of thing we can be looking at doing when using Vertigis Studio Inline. So now, if you do have linear reference data or a linear reference system, have you ever found yourself saying, you need a better way to visualize our linear reference data? As we've just looked at, it's, it's generally overlapping data, generally top-down views. So we could really do with a better way of visualizing our linear reference data. You need a way to connect your SLDs, your straight line diagrams, or alignment sheets to specific business processes. So we can, we can using workflow, we can link to other systems from the Studio Inline. We need to make it easier for our engineers to make decisions involving our linear assets. As we've just seen, if you've got a straight line diagram in front of you, it is far easier to see this information in, the, in that cross-section view than having a bunch of layers basically overlapping each other. You don't need to make additional web mapping applications. You don't need to turn layers on, turn layers off. It's right there in front of you. And finally, 
we want to use OGIS as a system of record for our linear reference processes. So you spend a lot, probably spend a lot of time and effort getting your GIS system as you want it. You probably spend a lot of time and effort getting your linear reference system set up as well. Now, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You want to be able to use your linear, your linear reference data in your existing GIS system. And all of these questions can be answered with Vertigo Studio Inline. So the tagline there is transform your linear reference data into dynamic charts. What it essentially enables you to do, it gives you the option to enable the dynamic visualization and exploration of linear reference data alongside a map within a viewer. This data is presented via configured charts and is linked to the linear features relative position. So, visualize our linear reference assets in a dynamic chart in view that integrates with UGIS and can include user uploaded data. What that means is we're essentially adding inline into a web mapping application. It's not a new tool, it's not, a, it's not something that's been, uh, been created as an afterthought. It's something that's going to be included in existing mapping applications. Streamline your business processes by greatly reducing the time required for engineers to access alignment sheets and straight line diagrams. As we've just seen in a couple of slides ago with that straight line diagram, it's far easier trying to, trying to capture some information when, when it's laid out in front of you in that way far simpler, therefore far quicker. Gain more insight in real time by referencing the GIS to ensure your engineers are viewing the most up-to-date info. If you've got the up-to-date information in your GIS, then you will have the up-to-date information in your inline. So it will be as up-to-date as any of your data is. Connect to your workflows by launching specific tasks to enable staff to automate various business processes and reports. Now, if you've used Vertigo Studio workflow before, you'll know it's a really, really powerful tool for automating a whole host of tasks and then creating reports from that and it possibly even connect into other systems. So we can run our workflows in line with Vertigo Studio Inline. Leverage an industry solution that's built for linear networks. So what we're saying here is this is specifically built for linear referenced systems. It's not an afterthought. It's not something that we've got, ah, oh, well, what can we do with that? It is all about how we can best use linear reference data. And then we're looking at integrate with our existing apps. So we can see there from the logos, we've got Web App Builder, we've got Geocortex Essentials, and we've got Vertigo Studio Web. So any of those three, you can use in conjunction with Vertigo Studio Inline. So we're gonna look at a demo, and I'm just gonna come out with my slides for a moment and open this viewer up. So what we're looking at here, We've got a pipeline in Texas, and that's the yellow line going across the screen. So I'm just going to get that more centrally. And what we're gonna do is select which segment of the pipeline we wanna view our straight line diagrams for. So if I select root and range, hover over our line, and we can see which line which segment of the line we're interested in. I'll click this packet draw middle valley pipeline. And then from there, we're gonna, we're gonna state which is our start point for the line. And then we're gonna, we're not gonna use the whole segment. We'll go down, down to around here. And there we've, We've assigned the start and end point of our straight line diagrams. 
and we can see these lines, uh, sorry, these measurements are feet and decimal feet, and you configure that when you configure the charts in Fertage Studio Inline. One thing to note is as I'm hovering along the map, along the line, you can see the red line in the straight line diagram follows with its relative position along the, along the diagrams there. So if we get to the end there. And in the same way, if I hover along in the diagrams, we can see along in the map in the relative position as well. So first thing to look at is we can configure different views in Vertigo Studio Inline. So we, this, in this particular viewer, we've got integrity and we've got physical properties. So we'll take a look at integrity to begin with. And first thing we can see is our inspections data. And these points are all configured for different types of inspections. And as we hover along, we can see where they are on the map. So if we click on them, we can see their attributes as well. So any attribute data is associated with these points, we can see that. Going down to the next one, we've got CP readings. This For this segment of pipe, there's nothing in here, so we'll just minimize that. There's always going to be times when there's a, there's a chart you've configured that you don't need, so you can just minimize it down. Here we've got a risk category, so we can see a linear event here. And we can see where, where our risk changes categories and what categories they are. And then we've got our repairs as well. So we can see this is a normally repair, another normally repair, sleeve repair. Each of these points are highlighting different repairs. Now let's have a quick look at our physical properties view. So from there, we can see the first one we've got is our profile chart, so basically our elevation profile of this segment of pipe. So what we're interested in, so we can see what the height is as we're, as we're panning along, and we can see that along, along the segment of pipe, what the height is. So we're interested in the highest point. So what we'll do is go here, and we want to highlight that. So we can add a point of interest there. We can see the point of interest is added above it there. And then we can see that there's a marker added to the map as well with the measurement distance where that point of interest is too. And we can add as many points of interest as, as you like to, to, the, uh, to the viewer. Moving down to our pipe properties. So we've got the locations of our valves and we can go into our layers and just to demonstrate, this is a Vertigo Studio web view viewer. It's nothing, it's nothing, you know, completely different that we're using in line with. It's a Vertigo Studio web viewer. So we can go around and turn whatever layers we want to see on. We'll see in a moment when we zoom in that these layers are then turned on. So we're looking at some valve information. We've got some casings. Now, what's quite interesting there, just by looking at that, is we can see we've got road casing, we've got another road casing, and then down the next chart, we've got crossings, and we can see where there's a crossing, there's a casing, and vice versa. So, we can already look at that quickly and say, if there's no casings where there's a crossing, then we might need to get a maintenance team out there and add something, or there might be an error in the data, but... Uh, you know, just by quickly glimpsing at that, you can see that there would be something out of the ordinary straight away. We can see what kind of coatings the pipe have. We can see some information about the pipes. And then down onto our crossings, as I mentioned, we've got our road crossings. We can see where we've got ecological areas and we've got pipe, uh, high population areas as well. So we're just coming into a town here. So we're starting to get into the suburbs with our high population areas. And if we go and have a look at one of these valves, we'll look at the attributes there. We can zoom to that feature as well. 
and we can see that we've zoomed into that feature now and we can see some of the relevant layers behind the line as well which perfectly demonstrates how it can be difficult to get all that information when it's a top-down view so we can see those points here i think these are inspection points i can see there's valves here but i can't really see much more than that just by looking at it and as this is vertigy studio web we could quite easily run any workflows or run any reports that we wanted to from the viewer we don't have any setup for this but what i'm going to do is just quickly do a quick drawing so this is the area of pipe we're currently interested in so i'm going to draw a polygon around this pipe Nothing particularly advanced about that, but just highlights immediately where we're looking at when we're looking at the line. Um, some other options we can look at. We can, we've got some additional menu options within here. So we can add some data. We can clear our route from, from there. We can export this as an image. So if you don't want to run a report, just grab, a, essentially grab a screen grab. You can run that. Quick access to help files. We can share a link. We can switch to dark theme there. We can show our POI panel. So we've only got one POI that we added, but we can we can bin it and then we can get rid of them. One thing that's quite cool we can do here is pop out this this straight line diagram section in a new window. So if I had two screens that I could share with you, I could drag this onto one screen and keep the mapping view on the other screen. Put that down there. So we can really get a sort of true dashboard experience with the information we're trying to see there. And one other thing to show you is we're looking at straight line diagrams here and it's not always the case that you want orientation to be north orientated. You might be looking at something like a railway line where we're looking at the direction of travel. So we might want to be looking at east to west or what, whatever direction. So we're in Vertigy Studio Web, so we can just quite easily rotate the viewer with a right click. And if we have our straight line diagrams back, that's still, we can see the red cross at the start of the pipe segment we're interested in, we can see still move that moving along. And that's a quick run through Vertigy Studio Inline. So I'll just pop back to my slide deck and let you know where you can go if you want to find out more. So first off, we've got Vertigy Studio Community. If you are a current Vertigy Studio user, then Hopefully you're aware of the community. I think it's a fantastic resource. Um, whole host of Vertigy Studio users get on there, post, post hints, tips, resolutions to any issues. It's a really, really useful resource. The documentation center as well. Essentially, all the documentation for all your Vertigy Studio products can be found from that link. The developer center, if you're looking at taking things a little bit further than out of the box capabilities, then you can start to look at some, some information in the developer center to get you on your way. And the Vertigy Studio YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen this, I would recommend having a quick look on, on YouTube and looking at the Vertigy Studio channel. It's a really useful, really useful site with some good hints and tips, small, short five minute videos, on how to do things a little bit more efficiently. And yeah, it's, a, it's another good one to have a look at. So you've had a look at Inline and you think, okay, that's great. Where do you get started? Well, first off, have a look at 60 day free trial. Um, 
make sure it is exactly what you're after and see if it's for you. And you can do that from apps.vertigestudio.com. And we move on to the questions now. So there are a couple of questions have come through. So first one, does, does inline have to be used with linear reference data? Ideally, yes, it's, it, it's what it's designed for. Uh, it, it's the whole point of it. But just to muddy the waters a little, uh, you, it doesn't necessarily have to be linear reference data. If you've got linear data that has a geometry, so you see a shape length field or you know a geometry that can be measured against, then you can use that as well, actually. Another question is, how, how do you choose the symbols in the charts? Um, so presumably that means the charts in the viewer that we were looking at. So we got all the crosses and the squares and the circles. Um, so from, from Vertigo Studio inline designer, you can configure how the data will be displayed. It's a really easy method of configuring. It's just just a very similar way to how you might configure them in in um, in say desktop GIS. Uh, you can you can def def define shapes and points based on categories, and then you can go into a bit more depth and add some definitions and have different different uh, symbology based on different definitions. And then we've got, right, so can, can we use it with HTML5? So yeah, uh, HTML5 is your Geocortex Essentials viewer. So we can, we can use Vertigo Studio inline with Geocortex Essentials viewers, um, as well as Vertigo Studio Web and Web App Builder as well. Okay, I can't see any more questions than that. But if you do think of any questions later on, then please do give me a shout. As mentioned, I'm Arlet Nicholas. You can you can uh, catch me by email with arlet.nicholas at onespatial.com. But with that, I would like to thank you all for your time today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you've seen what Vertigo Studio Inline is all about. And yeah, reach out if you're interested. Thank you very much.